I'm Andrea Troy with Silicon Prairie News, and here we have Scott Blake, who is a barcode artist here at Big Omaha today. So, Scott, go ahead and give us a brief history about how you started barcode art and just how you got started with it in general and your inspiration to carry it out as a craft. Sure. Um, I started in, right before Y2K, the big computer into the world virus. That was in uh, or the year 2000. I was living in San Francisco, and they said, drain your ATM and fill up your bathtub, all because of zeros and ones. It was like the end of the world, all because of these little, yeah, zeros and ones, and so I, I was messing around in Photoshop, um, sort of painting, making my own halftone patterns, a um, very nerdy thing to be doing, and um, and instead of circles, which are typical halftone pattern, I created an artistic pattern that was made out of lines, and those lines sort of looked like a barcode, and before I knew it, I was staring at my first barcode portrait I made of Jesus, um, again, going back to that Armageddon, the apocalyptic zero and one uh, thing. Um, that was 98, so I'm on my 12th year, um, and I've made 40, 40 faces now. Um, I tend to do ultra-famous people, usually people that have one name, Elvis, Oprah, Jesus, Madonna, um, Gary, I did a portrait of Gary Vaynerchuk, he has two names, but uh, he's still sort of an internet celebrity. Um, I, I, try and, I try and use real barcodes from real products. So for Gary, I took all the barcodes from wine bottles that he drank on Wine Library TV um, to make this portrait. Um, yeah, and I hope we keep going. I have some more ideas and more faces. Someday. Describe some of the other pieces that you began working on and what kind of, what does it take to go into making these pieces actually work? Um, like I said, I did, you know, Jesus and Madonna. I, I tend to choose, I was, for a while there I was doing pop stars. Um, so like for the Elvis portrait, I took all the barcodes from Elvis CDs. That usually entails going onto like Barnes and Noble or Amazon.com uh, and literally you know, doing a search for Elvis and then copy and pasting all those little UPC numbers that they give away for free, which I think is great. Uh, I kind of like the idea of going onto Amazon and making money from that, sort of taking something, just little, just little bits of found data um, and creating something that I can call my own. And it takes you know, it takes me about 40 hours to do one portrait. A lot of it is doing a lot of it is you know searching on Amazon. It's sort of funny to make that into an art form. Um, but then once I collect all the barcodes, um, I put them into Photoshop. I write some action scripts in Photoshop that are very complicated. It takes about about four days to, to make one face. Like literally, I press a button, and the computer works for four days all by itself. Does that answer your question? <laughs> Now, being here at Big Omaha, what is your mission here at Big Omaha, and what is the message that you have to offer aspiring entrepreneurs who are interested in the craft of barcode art? Um, I sort of just came here, um, well, first was they asked me, I like when people invite me to do stuff. Um, I, just, I just, I sort of wanted to surprise people and shock people. I know they have a lot of interesting speakers that, you know, are going to say some pretty wild things, but I wanted to show people, like, you know, sort of represent, also, also represent what Omaha is for people that aren't from the city, that don't know what kind of creative people we have living here. Um, so that was, you know, a nice way to represent my city. You know, I'm not from here, I'm from Florida, but I do consider myself a Nebraska artist now. Um, you know, and it's weird, I, I feel like all artists are by default entrepreneurs. Um, you know, we tend, I, I like to work alone, um, and I, you know, I run my own business, which is my artwork. Uh, so yeah, I kind of want to show people that artists are entrepreneurs too. I kind of feel like I didn't think about that before this weekend, but um, yeah, it goes without saying. <laughs> it's just our product is a little bit different than um, most of the stuff being talked about here today. But it's all about being creative. I definitely, you know, it's a really cool audience here. Um, you know, I don't think a lot of people here came, came here expecting to see artwork, and that's what I like a lot. Um, I kind of don't like doing, I, I don't like doing gallery shows so much because people are expecting to see artwork. So I kind of like this, or they don't know what they're going to see. And there I am, at the end of the hallway. <laughs> On the topic of art, artists being entrepreneurs, um, with barcode art, how do you differ in the entrepreneurial world with, against somebody who picks up a paintbrush and is a painter? Well, the, probably the biggest thing that separates me from most of my other artist friends is that you would consider maybe a painter. Is um, I do the merchandise. I sell t-shirts, I sell temporary tattoos. Barcode tattoos, I do, um, like I said, barcode t-shirts, barcode baby bibs, barcode coffee mugs, barcode beer koozies. I mean, anything you can put a barcode on, I I do it, I sell it in my store, and I sell it for just cheap. 
couple dollars for some tattoos. Um, that's actually what where my, my entrepreneurial spirit really shines. Uh, that's how I make my money. I don't, I don't sell a lot of the big pieces. And I'm, I'm kind of glad that I don't have to worry about making money on the art that I think is most important. And yeah, the little tattoos I, is kind of art, but it is merchandising. Um, and yeah, a lot of people feel safer about buying that than buying a painting. You know, they might be worried they're going to ruin it. Um, <laughs> You know, with the coffee mug, yeah, I guess you could break it, but you know, you just buy another one. So, um, you know, I, I wish I would see more of my, my painter friends. You know, because they still are working their day job. You know, it was all they do is they sell one painting, you know, once a year for six thousand um, dollars. That's it. They don't have another painting for another you know, six months. So, um, yeah, merchandising, merchandising, merchandising. <laughs> so, where do you plan to take barcode art in the next five to ten years, being an entrepreneur? Um, well, I'm going to Paris next month, which is nice. I get take my art over to Europe and um, just do a little bit more traveling. I've been doing these events where it's literally a set up for one day. Um, I, did a, I did an event like this at a college in Santa Fe. I went to a rock club in Denver and so set up right inside of a rockabilly club. They love my Elvis portrait. So I kind of want to go again, go to unusual places, stay away from the art galleries, um, just sort of create my own train. People always say they want to get on the train and I finally realized, especially coming to this conference, is, you know, I'm stop, stop looking for that train to get on and just make your own train. And it seems like a lot, but um, it's the only way I know how to, I know how to get what I want. It's, it's like going after it. But actually, I might, I might get away from the barcode thing. I kind of feel like it's one of its course. Uh, Ten years of making art with barcodes, I never thought I'd you know, been this far. But I really am interested in flags. Um, I kind of like barcodes and coloring designs. I see, I see them that way. Uh, but yeah, just continue making art on the computer. That's the thing that I'm most passionate about. Pressing my keyboard and clicking my mouse. <laughs> well, thank you. That was Scott Blake, who is a barcode artist here at Big Omaha for the big next three day event. Thank you so much, Scott. Thank you.